Hello and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Masho Jr. who wanted to know how to create a particle in RPG Architect. And so with that said, let's get started. Alright, so here I am in the 2D sample project that comes with the engine, and we are going to add a particle effect. So to do that, you press F8 and go into the database here, and then click on the animations here. And this is where you're going to add animations, and one of them can be a particle. And so we're going to select this number three that is blank right now. And the first thing we're going to do is give it some keyframes. So we're going to resize this from zero and we'll just say about 15. So we'll hit 15 right here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is give it a name. So I'm going to just call this particle one. And then we can select one of the keyframes and we can start to add an element. Well, one of the elements that we can add is a particle emitter, right? And you can see that we have a character over here. This is going to be our test view of the particle. And you can select which test character it is over here. So if you had more than uh, one character, you can select from those. But right now we just have this one hero one. And so this is the one, this is the character that we're going to test all our particles on. So now once we have this selected, we can actually come down here. We can rename it if we want. For instance, you can have another particle emitter. And so you can have two particles going at the same time. But for this purpose video, I'm just gonna show you some of the settings that we can use for particles and make a simple one emitter particle. So with this emitter selected, we're gonna go down to graphics and we're gonna add the graphic for the particle. And I'm just gonna use, let's see, there's a portrait, just this simple head. Now, if, you're, if your white box right here is kind of a little off, like let's say that it's the frame height that's showing way down there and the frame width is showing way over there. There are some buttons up here that you can select, for instance, this right one. If you click it, it will snap the white box to the sprite cell. So if you have a one image sprite cell, that's really convenient on getting the correct dimensions. So then I'm gonna hit okay on that. With the graphic set, we can now come up to duration and we can give it a duration. So this is in milliseconds. So if we go 1000, that's gonna be one second. And then we can actually test play this by right here. And you can see that the particle goes for one second over me. So you can see that we have a particle that is emitting. Now from here we have some other settings like maximum particles, minimum particles, particles per second. These are all going to be stuff that we tweak as we're um, making this particle. Now we're going to go down uh, here where it says birth, death, and ongoing. So this again is, is kind of like a state machine inside these. So this is the birth. So this is going to run one time at the start of the particle. Death is obviously going to run one time at the end of the particle. And then ongoing is going to be the update, what is happening during this particle life. So we're going to stick with ongoing, for instance, and we can just click over here and we can add now these properties to affect this particle. So for instance, one thing that we can do is we can, the translation. So the translation is going to be the position that the particle is spawning in. And right now, if we click on it, you can see that it's zero, 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 zeros. They're all zeros. Right, so what that is meaning is that this is spawning exactly where the X and Y coordinate are of the player. So when we press play test, it's always going to spawn in this same area. So let's say that we wanted to make a, a box, like we want the particle to spawn within these areas right here. So what we would simply do is we would say the X translation, because remember the X and Z are the ones that are the flat plane for 2Ds. Y is what's going to be used for your up and down for 3D uh, situations. So the X right here, it's at zero. We want the maximum to be one. Let's just say we want it to go one this way. So we'll, we'll put one. By one, I'm pretty sure it means one tile. So you're looking at whatever tile length you're at. So 16 in this case. So it's going to go one tile this way. And then in order to make a better a box, a more equal box, we want to go negative one this way. So the min is going to be negative one. And then on the X, it, you can kind of think of it the same thing. So the maximum is going to be one tile or one, yeah, one tile down. So like this. And then the minimum is going to be negative one. So up one. Now I'm not sure if I'm getting my negatives and positives right. I'm just, but the box that we're making is correct. So then we'll go negative one like this. Now, before we press play, we actually have to change the duration because right now it's, it's not happening. And so we need to change this. We'll just say, we'll give it 100, just, you know, a blip of 0.1 second duration. And now we can press play and we can see that it's spawning them within this box that we've created within this one by one box, basically. 
All right, and you can see now that it is spawning particles per second, it's spawning 50. So now we can further experiment and we can say, let's only spawn one particle per second. And in order to do this, we have to change the minimum right here, because if we press play, we're still gonna have 20 minimum. So we're gonna have to change this to one as well. So we'll have one particle per second. We, this is only ran for one second. And we have a translation that's running point every point one second. All right. So if we press play, you can see that this one particle is going to be bouncing around this block every point one second. So that is what the translation does. It's the position of the particle on the screen. You can do it one time in the birth, or you can have it ongoing in the ongoing area. All right. So I'm going to change these back to 20 and 50. Let's play, it just kind of mumbles up right there. And now we can go on to another one. Let's go and add some velocity. All right, so velocity is going to be the movement of it and specifically in a direction. And so we're again, we're gonna use only the X and the Z. And let's just give a one, 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 one. So this is the maximum minimum value. So this is how you would randomize kind of the movement. And let's just hit play and see what that does. You can see that it kind of looks like it's moving it towards the bottom right portion of the screen here. We can say continuous and press play and you can see that it's just, they're all zooming. So you can also adjust the duration frequency right here, but um, I actually like how this flows, so I'm just gonna leave it. But the thing to consider is that again, this if you want this to go in a full circle as far as direction goes, again, you're gonna want to give the opposite value of what you're giving. So let's say that you're giving one, well, you're going to want to use negative one as your as your minimum and so now if we that and if we play you can see now they're going all over different directions it looks pretty cool all right and you can play with this as you need the next one that we can look at is let's look at the scale and here you can see that you have an x scale and a y scale and they're both set to one right now which is 100 percent so Right now, nothing is going to change. So we could say at the start, we want it to be one, but at the end, let's just say that we want it to be 0.2. And then the Y scale as well, 0.2. So if we play this one, you can see that they're gonna get smaller by the end of the particle animation, All right? So that's scale. We can come over here and we can do opacity. We can do all these different things, but I'll just uh, stick with, I think, hue shift. And a lot of this is gonna be experimental, but we'll change this to the duration of the emitter right here. And then we'll say by the the end of it, we want it to be like a 1.5 or something like this. And I don't know, I'll have to play with this value. I can't remember exactly what we want. But I know you can put in some weird values and get some funny situation like this, or just kind of hue shift it all over the place. So I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, you can see now that we can just hue shift like this. And so that is really it. You can just play around with these different settings. You can play around with the different states, the start, exit, and update. And then the last thing to go over is how to call this animation here. Now, one thing I do wanna point out before that is you can actually loop right here and play, and it can be looping the whole time. So you could change this to, let's just say two and make it bigger, and then this one to two as well. And you can see that we can get the live update as it's going. So that is one cool thing. Just note that if you loop it on here, it's gonna be looping when you call it in the game. And so it won't go away. And so I'm gonna unclick this when we're done with this. So that is gonna be our particle that we play. And now I'm gonna hit okay. So the next thing to do is in the entity mode, control two, that's the hotkey for it. We're gonna double click into this NPC and the player action button. So when we talk to it, we are going to select animation and play animation. So what we're gonna do is we could do the entity I'm just going to do party and I'm going to choose the party member zero, which is going to be the hero. And then we're going to select the animation. And the one that we want to play is the particle one. And so then we're going to click OK on this and we're going to play test and see how this looks. And walk over to her and talk to her and boom, it plays the particle. All right. So it's literally that simple. Now it doesn't have a lot of settings like other editors or other engines do, but it's enough, I think, to actually get started and you can apply this to your normal animations. And so that's what makes it kind of cool is that you can add your particles to the animations. They're not all separate technically. 
but you can make them separate. And so anyway, I hope this video helped you out. Any questions, comments below, Steam Forums, Patreon, we'll get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.